So I've just got some red bell peppers that we've chopped up. So we're just going to start blending that up. Get them into a puree. And we want a really fine liquid out of this. So that looks good. So now one of the cool little tricks that we've got here is this is what's called a super bag. So we can strain this liquid and get all the bits out and get a beautiful liquid. Can be a little messy. You know, in the old days you'd use a muslin cloth, but you see you just get this beautiful red pepper juice. And the great thing about it, it's still fresh. We haven't cooked it. We've retained everything in there, all its natural flavor. And you can see now we've just got this beautiful red pepper juice. And it's important when doing this sort of thing that the, the measurements are exact. If they're not, suddenly you'll find things don't work. The 200 grams of our red pepper juice goes in. Now we've got a little sugar just to sweeten it up. We've got our wonderful white balsamic, the prolabito, which is gonna go in, and we know that's our secret weapon to making everything taste great. And then we've got here two grams of agar, which are gonna go in exactly measured out. Goes in there like that. And because it's red, people are gonna expect it to be hot. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of Tabasco in there just to give it that little bit of spice. And now we're going to mix that up. That's to ensure that we've really got that agar mixed in there. Now we're going to put it into a pot. Now what we want to do here is we want to bring it to the boil for exactly two minutes. While we're waiting for that to come up to the boil, the next thing that we're going to make is some melon caviar. So when it comes out, people will go, oh, that looks like salmon caviar, but it's actually made out of melon juice. So the first thing we need to do is make a calcic bath. So this water goes in here, which is 500 mils, 3.2 grams of calcic. And calcic is uh, just a salt. It's obviously often used in cheese making. You want to really get that mixed up. Now, it's important that you use mineral water because there's obviously chlorides in water, which we don't want in here. This has just come to the boil now. So we want to time it for exactly two minutes. Now, I could just taste it now to see that I'm happy with the amount of Tabasco in there. And I am. Tastes really good. So what I need to do is take one of these disposable piping bags, and I'm going to pour the liquid in here, and then I'm going to allow it to cool down because I want it to about 40 degrees before I start to make our pearls. If it gets to room temperature or cools down too much, it'll set on me, OK? I'm just going to leave that to cool down like that. Now I'm going to make the melon caviar, the melon that we're going to turn into caviar. What I've got is 500 mils of melon juice. Now we're going to pop in our 3.2 grams of algin. And this is like a stabiliser. It's a seaweed and it's used in making ice creams a lot. So we've mixed that thoroughly. We're going to pour it back into a container. And as you can see, there's a lot of air in there. So now we'll need to let it rest for at least 15 minutes to half an hour for that air to just slowly dissipate out of there. And the last thing that we need, ready for our caviar, is some sugar syrup. So this is 50% sugar, 50% water that we've just brought to the boil and simmered for about three minutes. And that's what we're going to store our caviar in. Then online you can buy a caviar maker. Comes with a little syringe, and we just put that on the end there. Make sure the syringe is pulled in. Rest this on top here like this. Okay, so now we've filled up here with caviar. Bring our calcic bath over, which is cold, obviously. And then we just slowly, you see all our caviar going in there? Now we can make all sorts of different flavors. We could do 
apple juice, we could do balsamic vinegar. There's all sorts of different caviar balls that we could make. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah really, really cool. cool. So we just let it sit in there for a bit and you can see we've got these fantastic caviar balls. So it's bringing a little theatre to the table, which is what I like. I've strained it out of the calcic bath, now I'm just going to pop it into a little bit of mineral water here and I'm just rinsing that calcic off there, the calcic bath off. If we left them in the calcic bath, they'll continue to cook. Even though it's cold, it's cooking it, it's just sealing the outside. And then we're just storing those in the sugar syrup. Okay. Now we're going to make our gazpacho soup, which we're going to turn into a nitro gazpacho sorbet. So what I've got here is um, some whole peeled Italian tomatoes that are going in, some red peppers that we've cut up and got rid of the seeds and the stalk, There's some cucumbers here. <laughs> Just chop up quickly like that. And we're going to start blending this all up. Now, I want a little bit of chilli in there. I've taken the seeds out because I've got some chilli with the Tabasco and the red pepper pearls. Some basil, some lovely big fresh basil leaves could go in. Some tomato juice. All good Kiwis love ketchup, so I just love to get a bit of that sweetness from the ketchup going in there. And what I've got here is some vine ripened tomatoes. I've just cut them in half and squeezed all the seeds out. And that's the last thing to go in. Mm. Gazpacho soup is a Spanish soup that they would have in the middle of summer on a hot day and it would be a cold soup and they'd get all the leftover bread and cut it up into pieces and fold it through the soup so it would fill people up, but it's cold, refreshing, but a real hearty, you know, lunch meal. So if I was going to use this just as a soup, I'd leave it a little chunky. But that's going to be perfect for making our nitrogen sorbet. OK, so hopefully this has now cooled down enough and we can start making some of our pearls. I've got a tall vase here and I've got some very cold oil. So the oil has been in the fridge. It's very important that the oil is cold. And now we're just going to cut a very small hole in our piping bag down the end here. And now, we just hold it there, letting the drops go in. And as you can see, as it drops down, going down, it's setting in the cold oil. See, I've got some lovely little pearls in there. So, to make our crab salsa, we've got some Chilean crab, which has come out of the shell. To make this salad is really easy. So it just goes in there like that. Now I've got a brunoise of apples, and the apples have been just poached in some apple juice. So I get some texture, because apple and crab is fantastic together. I've got some tobiko caviar which is flying fish roe. It's been infused with wasabi. It'll be a little bit crunchy. I've got our red caviar pearls going in. We'll take some of our melon caviar, some chopped chives, a little bit of aioli, just a little bit of runny mayonnaise, a little bit of cream in there, a little bit of garlic, just to bind it together. A touch of cracked pepper, a little bit of salt, and just a little drizzle of our balsamic in there, white balsamic, because we want a little acidity. Toss that around. Some really great flavours going on in there now. Put some of our crab salsa in. It's already looking pretty tasty, isn't it? OK, so that's our salad made. So now we'll make some gazpacho sorbet using liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen you need to treat like it's boiling water. It's as dangerous as boiling water. In fact, it's more dangerous. If you dip your hand in there, take it out, it'll be completely frozen and crack off. So it's really dangerous stuff. So here we've got a flask with liquid nitrogen in it. You want to come around here, Stu, and give me a hand? Now, I just want you to hold this bowl like that. Just hold it there. That's it. 
So I'm pouring the liquid nitrogen in there, which is freezing our gazpacho. And it's almost like it's cooking it, but it's cooking it with cold rather than heat. You can see now it's turning into sorbet, right? It's freezing it. And the reason that I like to use ni liquid nitrogen to make this sorbet is because it will be velvety smooth. Whereas if I did it in an ice cream machine, the ice crystals would be bigger. But I want velvety smooth. And now just to finish off, I'm just gonna take some of this sorbet, just a little bit, and pop it on top here. Just a little bit sitting up on top there. Just got a little bit of purple basil, just to sit on top there. So there you have it, what do you think of that? There's a bit of molecular gastronomy going on, all using natural products, really good flavors, and something just a little bit different that's gonna bring a bit of theater to the table. So you guys know it tastes good because you've tried it at the chef's table at Euro when you won your challenge. Absolutely. It's my favorite dish. It was? Oh, well, now you know how to make it, and you know, you can use that method of making caviar and pearls for all sorts of different flavors just to spice things up a little bit.